Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the 999 pack, the price point for a, what is it called, Eternal Masters. And that is the highest price I've seen. I mean, the 999 a pack, that's pretty greedy, which is a coast, because it doesn't cost you any more money to print that pack than it would to, you know, a pack of Dragon Maze, for instance. And I don't believe it's a good trend. I feel like the trend is actually very bad. Uh, packs have in general due to inflation gone up and up and up in price but something like Eternal Masters which I don't I don't know if there's any new cards I assume it's all reprints doesn't take much creativity yeah you might say oh well it takes a team to make a draft format yeah kind of but a lot of times people are not even interested and in, so when I think about Eternal Masters or Modern Masters I just want good cards in the set how many people are actually going to draft the set when your local store gets like two cases? Like what? Like, and there's no GP event. There's no, you know, there's no um, pro tour. It just doesn't, it's not draftable. Like how many times are you going to be able to draft the set? So yes, maybe people spend money on designing a draftable set. But in my opinion, it's all about the reprints. And we had two good ones, Waste of, ah, Waste of Will. <laughs> Wasteland and Force of Will. Uh, I like the Force of Will at Mythic, and I love the Wasteland at the rare. I, I, it makes sense to me. We're going to see more goodies, um, maybe, hopefully, at Tomogorf. Tomogorf is one of the most played green cards in Legacy. So we'll see if uh, Tomogorf gets a new reprint. But 999 pack, I mean, that's just very, very greedy. Um, and I think it's... It's an indicator of things to come. Can I see a $20 pack down the road? Yes, I can. Can I see a $40 pack down the road? Yes, I can. That $40 pack will be called from the vault, right? Which sometimes sells for $200. I mean, that's what it is. It really, from the vault, is just a pack of 15 cards that you already know what the cards are and then foil. So they're a premium pack. They tried that with shards of Alera. That didn't work as well as they expected, uh, mainly because the packaging was like very, like it just seemed too expensive for that type of that card. So obviously if, you know, they try it again. And so Shards of Alora, they had the all foil pack. So you were guaranteed a foil rare or mythic and then every single uncommon and common and the land would be foil. And that was kind of an interesting take on it. I don't feel like many people purchased that pack because um, Shards itself was not good. But if you had like a foil pack of, let's say, Carnes of Tarkir, where one of your possibilities is to get a foil fetch land, uh, it, would be it would be a lot more interesting to see what that price point. Uh, I think, if I correct me if I'm wrong, I think the MSRP for the foil, all foil boost pack was like $12.99 something. I've always, I'm only seen it on discount though. I know it's always been on like discount on Target or Walmart, I guess $7.99 when um, it didn't sell well. I know it did not do well. So you have the $10 pack. Um, I could see a $12 pack. The only reason I can see like these really expensive packs because Modern Masters 1 used to be that expensive. The MSRP wasn't that expensive, but the actual packs were selling for $15 a pack. And that was pretty crazy. So Wizards of the Coast knows that, hey, at least we can reach $15 a pack MSRP. Now, they have to put some really good stuff in it. I do not like the trend. I feel like the trend is, yeah, I mean, I'll just be honest. It is disadvantageous to someone who cannot afford $10 a pack. Um, because your battle cards, your force of whales, your wastelands, I know people will say, oh, you can trade for them, you can trade for them. But hey, you know, if someone's, want, someone's able to spend $10 a pack and you're not able to, they're going to get better cards than you are. They'll get the Force of Wales, they'll get the Wastelands, they'll pimp out their trade binder, and yes, they paid more. And Magic is a pay-to-play game. And there's no better example of that than a $10 booster pack. That $10 booster pack, it's got to have some good stuff in it. Like, Wizard of the Coast, I don't believe is dumb enough not to put really good stuff in a $10 booster pack. Because if they can sell a $10 booster pack, next time around they'll be like, oh, we sold a $10 booster pack. 
hmm, that's interesting. Let's try to sell a $20 boost pack next time and we'll put even better stuff in it. And Wizard of the Coast is gonna eat the secondary market alive if this is what they are planning to do because in the, I'm okay with that. I feel like that part is okay. I just would want the packs to be a little cheaper in the future, have the same equal quality of cards, but be a little cheaper in the future. I think that's all I can really ask. I'm a little disappointed that their packs are gonna be $10. Um, I think that's too much. That's way, way too much for the average Magic player. And that's not something that I look forward to paying for. It. And it's, I can't imagine anyone's like, oh great, $10 a pack. Now I can buy like two of them. So, Eternal Masters, ugh, I think it's an indicator of things to come. I would not be surprised if a year from now I'm talking about, oh my gosh, Eternal Masters 999 pack, but Eternal Masters 5 or Eternal Masters 2 or Modern Masters 2017 is $15 a pack. That's a great deal. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.